saw an ad in Gama Sutra, which was the online uh, gaming site, which is actually still around. This was 1998, though, so it was early, early days of the web. And I applied for the job, and I got it. And so I flew up here, flew my family up here to the Seattle area, to Redmond, and started working for Claude Comer at, uh, at NST, and it was... Um, it was amazing, and right next door was DigiPen. Uh, so Claude was the chairman of NST, and he was also the founder of DigiPen. And so one of the first requests I got uh, at NST within within the first few months of working there, uh, Ray Ann came up to me and said, "Hey Lawrence, do you uh, would would you mind uh, uh, teaching a sound design and Foley class for us at DigiPen?" And I said, "Sure." And so I started doing that, and I did that actually every year um, for the entire my entire tenure at Nintendo. Uh, it was essentially a new franchise, uh, and although based on specific gameplay of a, of, of a game from the 90s. And it was super exciting because uh, all of a sudden we were, uh, not only were we doing our own original game, the, the previous games were all remakes or uh, remasters or re-envisioning of, uh, of previous titles, but this was something uh, totally new, all new levels, uh, and um, it was a bit daunting to think that now I'm, I'm going to be writing music for these two iconic characters. Yeah, it was a lot of fun though. Yeah, I like to tell my students that uh, great uh, 20th century composer Igor Stravinsky says that limitation fosters creativity. And it's really true. If you have an unlimited palette of you know, doing anything at, at, from a creative standpoint, it can be a little bit um, daunting, right? You can get like, oh my gosh, the whole blank page syndrome. But with those limitations, it, it's actually a challenge and it, and it, it, it is fun to be creative when that, within those, those uh, limited resources. So um, it was basically like working with a little sampler, a mini sampler. So I had to make my own sound banks and then all the, all the data was performance data. Um, uh, you know, in MIDI files. So it was, it was challenging, but uh, but a lot of fun as well. There was a lot of music to be arranged uh, and written, original music to be written as well. And I figured, I've got the perfect guy <laughs> to do it. <laughs> <laughs> my colleague Bruce Stark, and so that was that was really where I started was uh, with uh, Bruce, who was the who is the chair of the music department here at Digipen, and and a fabulous composer for the concert stage. And even though it took some convincing, I I knew I knew that he, that that his skill set together with mine, we'd be like it would be the perfect uh, match for this project, and it was. <laughs> He threw this stuff at me, and I started listening to all these little tunes, and that was part of his realizing, wow, this is this is cool stuff. These are nice tunes. I think I could do something with this. And the other part was, um, and this took me a while to get to, is it came, it became clear to me that um, this uh, this music and what I would be doing on the project actually played really well into my skill set because I'm a con I'm a composer for the concert stage, but I'm also, uh, my secondary musical love is jazz, and I've been playing jazz piano. I made a living as a jazz pianist for many years in Tokyo, and I'm a drummer. So I have all that, and these things, they just played right into the idea of making this cool music, much of which is sort of a Latin jazz kind of a sound, not all of it, but much of it. And so it was, um, it became clear not only that it was gonna be fun and working with people I love working with and respect greatly, but also that it played well into my skill sets, and. I was bound to learn a lot that would actually help me um, be a better teacher here at Digibin too, which is important to me. So there was sort of a lot of things lined up for me that made it uh, a convincing package. We had to sort of take the originals, first of all, give them more of a, our, 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 uh, our vision for the project was very much uh, what sounds like an acoustic band, most of, most of the music. So. Uh, we could I could add more things to it, and also we needed to, to uh, have increased duration. So we would present the original material with with a new kind of arrangement, and then in the next part of it, we often let the band keep playing. Maybe have, have some solos in the instruments, improvisational or notated, 
So uh, it was it was a great experience, uh, just listening to this stuff and trying to figure out how it can be brought to life in a fresh way, but that still, and we knew that uh, the company wanted this, it still honored the, the cherished original sound. You know, you get too far, you get too creative with an arrangement and you start to actually pull away from what some listeners really want is that, that something about that original theme that they want to hear. So combination of being very loyal to the original, but giving it a lot of new stuff to make it uh, fresh and, and exciting in another way. This is, this is probably the aspect of this whole project that uh, has inspired me the most, even in a project I'm currently working on my own music, is this, this incredible combination of virtual instruments that sound really good and throwing in even just one or two live musicians into that that it just transforms the listening experience and often it, it just it fools me the whole thing starts to sound like it's uh, like it's in, with live musicians so and it also gets back a little bit to what Lawrence is saying about how constraints foster creativity you know I knew because we you know there's only so much budget you can't just say oh I want an orchestra we knew I was told generally speaking one or two live players would be a good uh, ballpark figure for the and the rest being uh, virtual and that itself was a really good constraint it set out the trajectory it helped me just uh, really mm -hmm. focus in on what sounds I could use that are gonna sound really good from the DAW and what instrumental additions are gonna just be the secret sauce that just makes it takes it to the next level so uh, that particular process of adding live musicians was really kind of a, a big mind-opening experience for me even in my own work as a concert composer I want to make an album right now that is using this very similar pipeline because uh, it's, uh, it creates some amazing results if you, if you do it right. <laughs> so the, the fact is we just have this amazing um, pool of, of musicians among our adjunct faculty and so using them was just all I can say, it was just a dream, it was, it was a pleasure. And working here with Tackett, uh, with our studio here, the, the sounds were amazing. Uh, it's like it, the stars lined up. It was uh, the recording sessions that I participated in anyway. They just, they went so smoothly that we were like ahead of schedule. Uh, everything just, uh, the musicians were just so prepared. They came in ready to go and bam, we, we just ran through it and tack it at the, at the control. And this guy overseeing things. All I can say is it was, uh, this project went remarkably smoothly. Although there were challenges that came and went, but as far as my take on the recording sessions that I was in, Phenomenal. Yeah, it's it's a kind of a dream come true. It's it's better than I possibly hoped. I, I mentioned that when I left uh, Nintendo to come full time to DigiPen, that I tried to leave the door open in case there would be a chance to do some contract work, whether it was consulting on sound on sound effects for a game, or or maybe doing some music eventually, and. Um, it's 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 just the fulfillment of, of, of my entire career really it's and in this particular project especially you know that was 20 years ago that I wrote all this original music and it was all it was all original music there was except for the title theme that used some some themes from the original Mario uh, and Donkey Kong music um, it was all just music that I dreamed up you know in my brain for the subsequent installments of the franchise we we introduced uh, 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 arrangements that i did of, of some iconic music from the mario franchise but in that first game it's all it's all my original compositions and when i started listening to them as bruce and i were going through um, i had forgotten half of that stuff i mean i once i heard it i remembered it but it you know i've done a lot of stuff in my career and by the time you get to this point it's like you've forgotten half of what you even did and um, to be able to take the, that music, which I was very proud of, um, and I'd forgotten how proud I was of it because I hadn't listened to it in you know, 15 years or 20 years, and then to have uh, to bring uh, Bruce's talents as an arranger uh, and, and a collaborator and, and Tackett's talents as an engineer, uh, not to mention Greg Dixon, uh, who also engineered the cutscenes, and all our musicians, um, all I can say was just, just like, Pinch me, I gotta wake up, this must be a dream. Now that the game is out, uh, I've <laughs> 
super, super excited to be able to talk, not just to my friends and family and the public, but particularly to my students, to our students, to be able to, to show them and talk about the process because this is at the heart of, um, it's not the only way to do it, but this is one very effective way to produce music for a, for a AAA title uh, on a budget. And I, I think the music speaks for itself. It's, um, I can't wait to tell them. As Lauren said, it's, it's, I can't wait to be able to share this with my students because uh, there are parts of this work that I did that until now I've just said, yeah, uh, once in a while I'll do a commercial project. I did this thing last year, but that's as far as I could say. And I would mention some aspect of the, of the pipeline or what I did as an arranger or composer. And so I just can't wait to be able to pull out the file even and show them what I'm talking about specifically uh, with a piece of music that by then they may actually start to be familiar with, which is even cooler for them, you know. Oh, it's that music in, in this scene or, or in this level. So I can't wait to, uh, from a pedagogical standpoint, to just use some of these materials. It's, it's the real deal. Um, and I, I learned so much about it too, and it's, it's already influencing how I'm going to approach teaching what I do, which is more of the traditional art of composing, but still I can start to bring in many things that I learned from this experience into that process that I think will help keep students engaged and, and, and keep, the, keep the teaching as relevant as it can be. You know, here I am working with, with we're, we're very different composers. I'm a game composer. I'm very proud of my work. I'm good at it. I've done great work. But I'm working here with Bruce Stark, who is a composer for the concert stage. So we joke about it on my side with our game course. So this is a real composer. He actually knows how to really compose for a full orchestra and then conduct it. So He's too humble. Uh, so for me to be working, you know, writing an original orchestral score and then getting feedback from Bruce, and Bruce is like, Hey, that's really cool. I wouldn't have thought of that. It was like the ultimate praise, and, and it was super fun. And uh, then we actually worked together, and Bruce gave me some tips and tricks, and then we revised that. And um, so that music was very much a collaboration, and that was one of my one of my best moments for me. Yeah. For, uh, to, to add to that, for me right now, it's just the fact that, and this isn't always true, right? I can listen to all this music now, and I am just delighted with it I love it I think it's really yeah. strong I, I time has passed and often our perspective on things shifts right I can listen to it and I can say man that sounds great yeah. I'm so proud that I could have been part of this team and to hear this music right now and I think to myself this is so happening I hope a lot of other people agree with me so that's really where I'm at with it I, I just I absolutely love what we did I'm very proud and happy about it which that's a nice little icing on the cake, because uh, it's not always that way. Sometimes you work really hard, sometimes you have to ship things off, I'm sure, in, especially in the commercial world, where you don't feel like you gave it your best, or you wish you could redo that. I don't have that feeling. I just have the feeling that we did great work, and um, and I can just sleep at night well, knowing that, hey, this is really happening stuff by my by my standards. Yeah, this is the, this of all the, of all the music I've written for all the video games in my entire career, this is absolutely, um, the best work I've ever done, and being able to collaborate with people like Bruce and Tackett and Greg and, and uh, Eric and all the others, um, it's, I feel like I've upped my game and I'm at the top of my game, and that's pretty a fun place to be uh, at this point in my career. Check out the game! Check yeah. out that music. You're gonna love it. Yeah, play the game. It's 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 a beautiful game. The team did a fabulous job with the art. Uh, the cutscenes are phenomenal. Um, the the gameplay itself and the art is just. Uh, if you enjoyed the original Donkey uh, Mario vs Donkey Kong on the Game Boy Advance, now to play it on the Switch on the Nintendo Switch, it's just luscious. Even on the little Switch speakers, it sounds great. And of course, if you put it in the dock and play it through your your home entertainment system, it's it's pretty epic, so crank it up. Ooh, ooh, ooh.